Hi everyone, happy Monday. We have another planner page today um, from World of Flowers by Johanna Basford. Um, this is, I think, from the pull-out page at the back of the book. So maybe one that maybe you haven't done, I don't know. It is quite daunting when it's a huge pull-out page, but we just got a little bit of it, which is rather cute. I decided that I would use my Stedler um, Ergosofts um, for this one. Um, it's quite a lot going on on this page and I thought if we just used a smaller set of pencils it would be less daunting, well at least for me anyway. I'm just going to make a start on some of these little cute houses at the bottom and then just see how we go really. Um, my intention is to film the whole page but I suspect it will be a selection of videos just because I think it might be a bit too much to manage all in one go. So let's start with this house and this roof and uh, I'm going to grab my very light um, green. This is 56, which is our light olive. And I'm going to use it all over the leaves, the roof leaves. You could do them as petals if you prefer. But I always think of these as leaves. So that's how I'm going to colour them. Now I'm just going to put a layer of this um, colour all over just to get us going really. And then we'll use a slightly darker one, the um, 57, I think. Yes, the olive green. Sorry, my memory is uh, not good today. Well, it's never good, is it? Yeah. Gosh, it's another sunny day today. I've uh, got my blinds shut. I don't think the sun will be all over the desk yet, but I want to keep the room cool. So I've closed the blind. The sun is coming in at the side, but it's not... Uh, it's uh, I can't completely obscure it as I can. There we go. My blind, my um, bottles of fixative, my cans of fixative spray were uh, getting in the way of the blind. There we go. So that's better. So I hope everyone's well and uh, having a good Monday. I'm actually thinking in the UK probably, I think the forecast is to be a little bit cooler on Monday. I'm hoping that, I think the temperature's sort of peaking today at its hottest, as far as I'm aware. I'm hoping anyway. I'm not a lover of the heat. Um, I'm struggling to sleep with it being so hot. Now we have this little bit of the top. They could do this as petals again or in the same colour. I'm having a thing. I think this is definitely a sort of stalk. I think I'm going to do it the same. So that is our initial bit. It's quite a yellowy green. And then we're going to go, whoops, we're going to drop our pencil. We're going to use 57 to, uh, to go over it in a bit more detail. So I'm thinking where these centre parts are, we'll put our darkest bit under there. And here where there's overlapping as well. And then just fade this towards the edge of the leaf. Just gently scumble it like this. So that it all blends together. There we go. You can always add a second layer of the uh, other green if you want to. I'm not sure whether it's going to need it or not. So I'm just going to pootle along with this and see how it uh, how it looks at the end. So I'm putting more layers here and then just less as I go towards the edge like that. And what I find this does is it makes the vein part stand out a little bit. If you put a really, really deep colour in here, it can make it look quite three dimensional like this vein is standing out. I'm not sure I want that much um, um, difference because uh, I'm not going to use that much um detail in the rest of the picture so i think it would be a bit odd if i do it here i don't want to do about 10 layers on each leaf i just want to keep it reasonably straightforward because it's quite a detailed and busy page so uh and you know i see pictures where people do spend a i don't know what that bit is there i think it must be printed on that bit there Never mind. Um, people spend a long, 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 long time on one little leaf, one little butterfly, one little pet, and it looks absolutely stunning. But I'm not, I'm not um, up for that, um, particularly on video. Um, I don't think um, you necessarily want that from me. If you, if 
you uh, want that there are people who do it so you can go and find them but I'm just gonna I like keeping it reasonably simple and uh, manageable sorry my nose is running I don't know why it always does when I record doesn't it? I have don't get hay fever I did have one sneeze yesterday apparently the hay fever was really bad um, my son hasn't taken his tablet this morning. I need to remind him. He's got one in his bag, his um, college bag, um, that he because he often forgets before he leaves home. So uh, he may have remembered and just not told me. I don't. I used to make him always tell me if he took medication just so I could keep an eye on what he was doing. But now he's seventeen. I thought I'd leave him to it. And uh, it's just a one a day hay fever tablets. It's not like it's paracetamol, you know, where you can overdose. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, he has to be start to be responsible for himself. But hopefully he's uh, grabbed some. He will if he keeps sneezing, it will remind him. But, uh, yeah, it was quite bad yesterday, so I gather. But uh, he seems to be managing it okay in his exams. He doesn't always take a pill um, normally, but you know, doing an exam, you normally be sneezing the whole way through. So uh, yeah, he does that, and uh, it helps. He's got statistics. I think it's their last further maths exam. Um, they did mechanics the other day and said. The questions weren't what they were expecting, so it was really hard. They said there was a lot of trigonometry in it, which is not what you would expect, apparently, in a mechanics exam. I would have no clue. I mean, I know it's sort of things like springs and acceleration of velocity and things, but I don't really know much. I'm quite happy with how this is coming out. I'm going to do this one too. Um, but uh, um, my one boy said he completely forgot how to do what the equations were, which you have to memorise. So, but he did quite a bit of revision yesterday for the statistics, so he might be able to make some marks up. But luckily, they don't need good marks. But it's nice if they can for them, you know, because they have worked hard. Um, I'm thinking about this um, this creeper whether to do it the same color as the roof leaves or whether to introduce a new color I think I might keep it the same what I might do is limit the green somehow maybe do these two greens on the house and then um, I don't think we need green on that house and then maybe all the leaves in a different set of greens or something I've got the darker one the um, 57 um, which I'm going to use for um, these and uh, I'm going to give it a sharpen actually, some of them are quite small. The sharpener's getting quite full. I need to remember to empty it. So I'm going to just try and make it a little darker on the edge and lighter towards the tip. And you could use both colours, you could lighten the tip with the, uh, with the 56, but I'm lazy, I'm not going to. And also it will make it look a bit different to the roof. It's a good excuse, isn't it? These are cute little heart-shaped leaves, aren't they? Some of them. This one isn't quite so much heart-shaped. It's still cute. So yeah, the exam this afternoon, Monday, my one boy's got the day off. Um, the other boy is doing two exams. Then on Tuesday, one's got two and the other's got one. And that's the one who's got two, that's his last day he'll be done. But the other one has got an exam on the Friday, so he's got two days revision when his brother won't be doing any, which feels a bit cruel, but it's the way it is. And uh, But that last exam, I think he will find okay as a chemistry. But my one boy is uh, was very confident coming out of his um, physics exam. He said, oh, I think I could probably get an A star. I thought, wow, <laughs> it's top grade, by the way. Thought, wow. And uh, he's also very confident with his geology, but he hasn't done them all yet, so we'll see. Um, he's got to wait. But uh, it, the maths is the one they're finding trickier. Although they're good at maths, 
I think I'm going to use the 56 for these little ones here. Let's give it a sharpen. There we go. So 56. This is a very damaged um, pencil. I've been sharpening it in my um, Stedler Super Point Mini Sharpener and it leaves little holes and dents in the pencil. But um, now I've got a dowel, I tend to use that instead because it's got the same sharpening mechanism but it doesn't leave dents in your pencil. Right, there's our um, beginning. Now we've got our windows. Now I'm thinking I might like to do all the windows the same. We've got a few windows here as well. I'm just having a quick look. So I'm going to grab what I think is quite a nice warm yellow. It's number one, it's just called yellow. Again, I am sharpening. Now, if you want to do a sort of glow, you can put a bit of a darker yellow around the edge and then a lighter one in the middle. Um, it's quite nice to use an orange or something, but because these windows are so small, I'm just going to colour them in plain colouring the same colour. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate it. I'm also thinking hard about what colour to do the actual house. Because, um, yeah, what's, what is it made of? I don't know. And I think I might do them both the same. I'm wondering about whether to make these roof leaves. I'll have a think about that. Um, I would usually do a house a sort of brick colour. We don't have that sort of colour. We've got an orange. Mm, orange goes quite nicely with this particular green. So maybe I'll pick this orange. This is number 42. I'm just going to give it a sharpen. It's just called light orange. We'll try this one. There we go, 42. So I'm thinking it might be a little bit darker on the edges and maybe under the leaves. But I think what I'll do is put a layer of this, a reasonably hard layer, all over. And then I might just use a darker orange to put in where I think there might be some darker areas like the edges and under the leaves. And then it'll be a bit easier and we'll still have a nice defined colour. I'm going to do both houses the same colour I think I don't know whether I I think it sort of helps to match them up a bit and to tie the picture together but I don't know whether deep down I'm just lazy and I can't be bothered to think of a better colour another colour <laughs> you know what really but uh, yeah colour colour combinations can be quite tricky can't they um, I've been using the colour cube cards which helps me a lot when I'm doing something, I mean a picture like this, because it's a scene and there are items, the colours you can sort of think, well, that would be X colour and that would be Y colour. But when it comes to things like mand mandalas or patterns, it's really hard. What colours do you use? So that's where the colour cube cards help me a little bit. Also, I do use them for regular pages as well at times. You've seen, um, may have seen, some of my videos with them in um, Rooms of Wonder. Actually, I've done a few pages with using colour cue cards. I find it creates a different challenge. Um, trying to decide what colours to use can be quite tricky if you've got 120 pencils to pick from. So if you've got a limited palette, that really helps. But if the palette is something that you don't normally do, or, you know, colours that you wouldn't normally put together then that can, or you've got a leaves in your picture and there's no green, that can um, create its own challenges, but I find that all part of the fun, to be honest. It, um, you know, opens your mind to doing something a little bit different. And I have had disasters, but normally it works. Just checking my battery level on my camera. Oh, it seems fine. Um, I left it switched on overnight. Um, and uh, my computer wasn't on and it's plugged into that which is where it charges normally so it's a little bit concerned that it might have run it down but it seems okay which is good because I wanted to get these videos done this morning 
been looking forward to this page. Sometimes I procrastinate on the uh, on the planner pages because they aren't pages that I'm in the mood for. But um, this one is very pretty. Now we've got a couple of bottles here, look. These are always tricky to know quite what to do with. I think it's easier to colour them in coloured glass rather than trying to make them see through. Um, particularly when we've got a colour behind. So we can have a play with that in a minute. Do you think they're supposed to be empty milk bottles though? Like outside the door, front door in the UK when I was growing up. You would uh, leave your milk bottles outside for the milkman to collect and with a little note often tucked in the top saying um, saying what you wanted in him to give you. Yeah. These days of course you order it online. He still collects the empties but uh, he already knows what you want. But um, oh, we don't have a milkman. I tried to get one um, but they were all fill, full. I didn't have any spaces. Right, I'm going to grab a darker um, orange. This number four is just called orange. I think I'm going to use that next. And I want to do a little bit of a darker bit around this edge. Just a little bit. And then sort of fade it in. Not loads, just a small border. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just a little fussy detail, really. And then a little bit under the roof part. Well, roof leaves, aren't they? I'm basically putting a bit of colour here and then just fading it down a bit. So it blends into the uh, colour we've already put down. And all the way around. Now it's a bit messy here, so I'm going to sharpen my or um, light orange. And just go back over it a little bit. Number forty-two again. So I wonder if anyone's going on holiday. Now the summer is approaching. I guess school holidays don't start for ages. Just thinking, because my boys are finishing. But of course, um, most um, schools don't finish until the third week of July. But uh, no, we're not uh, going away. We're actually um, going to be paying some money out on some work on the house. We're um, having um, a balcony replaced. And uh, and some railings um, sprayed. And it all costs money, um, which is okay. I mean, we're very lucky because we've paid off our mortgage. Um, we've now got spare money which we can save that we would have been, you know, that we were before using to pay our mortgage payments. This little house. I'm going to go back to the um, darker colour before. And just go under the roof. A little bit like I did on this one. Um, yeah, so we are very fortunate in that we've paid off our mortgage, so we've got that money we can just put aside, and uh, we've had it paid off a few years now, I think. So there's that sort of spare money that we can use to start to do work on the house back to the light orange just to tidy it up. So that's nice. So we did the kitchen, of course. Um, and now we're doing a little bit of work on the outside. It's just about, um, you know, these sorts of jobs that maybe you just haven't got around to doing rather than anything to do with whether we can afford them. We could have afforded them. This is number four, 56. I'm going to do these um, leaves. I'm going to just make them match. But, uh, yes, it's nice to get them things done. So uh, just little bits and pieces. I've sort of got a whole list of things that needs doing really, but it's just getting them done methodically. This is number 57. 
I'm going to do the tips of these and then fade it down. Um, yeah, so it's just getting bits and pieces done. I've got a few bits of electrical work that I need doing and all sorts of things, you know. But I can't cope with having it all being done at once. Like with the kitchen, it, you know, it took so long, it was quite stressful. So it was just nice having a little break without doing anything for a bit before we sort of thought about what to, where to go next. There we go. There's our... Now we need to do the framework around the windows and doors. And I'm thinking maybe if I go for the 49, it's a sort of orangey brown. It's actually called fawn for the frames. That will sort of work together with the orange. Like that. And the same here. And I'm going to do the same around the windows. I'm actually going to use this for the door hinges as well. I know they would normally be metal or something, but then the frame isn't, so I just want it to match. I think it looks better. Now you could make this look slightly three-dimensional by going around the very edge in a dark brown. But... Uh, as I say, I'm not going to spend too much time on each little tiny element. We've already spent 20 minutes doing two houses and they're not finished. So I think we are uh, we don't need to uh, spend ages. There's a fly in here. Brr. They annoy me. I've got my um, doors open upstairs, the bedroom French doors. Um, the, the doors here, I'm going to do in this... Um, color. This is number 24 and it's called Scarlet Red, but I think it's quite orangey. But I think a ready orange door will work very nicely. I'm just going to put it down in a fairly solid layer. Because I want it to look quite vibrant and of course the Stedlers aren't massively vibrant. one as well. You find if you sharpen a pencil it will become more vibrant but it can sometimes be a little more difficult to get any even layer if you have a really sharp point so you have to just get the balance right and it all takes practice and time. Nobody's perfect. So. I'm trying to think about what colour to do the door furniture as they call it. I don't know if they call that everywhere. That everywhere. But while you're watching, if you're not colouring, um, can you click the like and subscribe? That would be really lovely. Thank you if you haven't already. If you have already, thank you. It makes a difference. And uh, maybe by the time this goes out, I'll be up to 8,000. I don't know. Trying to get this edge bit. What I'm going to do is push the paper up a little bit so it's leaning on the page below and I can get that edge. It's quite tricky. There we go. I'm just going to redo this a little bit. Now you could put some shadow under the door furniture to make it look more three dimensional. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to do the door furniture actually in this colour. This is my Cheats Gold, it's number 16. Um, and if you put a little, quite a thick layer here, layer, 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 keep going, a little bit towards the middle, do the same here, lots, 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 a bit less there, and there. You can leave a shine in the middle, it can look a little bit like it's gold. It's not brilliant. As I say, cheats gold. This one, I'm just gonna layer it on. Now we have a flag here. I'm gonna use this for the little circle at the top and the bottom of the flagpole. Um, what color flags should we have? I'm thinking maybe we'll just go up an notch and do a red. I like red flags. This is two, and this is just um, called red. I'm just gonna block it in. Now, obviously, it's blowing in the wind and it's got a particular shape which should indicate to us what colour, how dark. I would have thought it would have been darker here, a bit lighter there, darker in there, darker there, but 
it's too small I'm just leaving it like that okay now my next step is background I'm going to come out and show you because this is going to be the end of this little bit of video probably um, I'm going to do some background and come back to you but I'm going to talk you through it so we have a little hill here and we have this sort of bushiness here but with a hill in the background there and then we have sky potentially so what I'm going to do is I think the things that are further back generally look better if they're a little bit darker so I'm going to do this bushy bit here in my very light number 50 okay so for this bushy bit for this little hill in front and behind I'm going to use number 52 now I know I said that the back things are darker this is the back's going to be darker but I just want to show some contrast between them so I'm going to go and do that before the next video so as I said number 50 for this main bit behind here now we've got these magical dots and stars and things I'm going to ignore those for now and then everything behind in this okay so that's going to be what I'm going to do I'm going to actually film it and there'll be a little speed colour at the end of this video of me doing it. Um, I'm not sure if you like it or not. Um, I don't know. Let me know. But I will uh, just speed up that end bit. So you can leave now and just get on. Or you can just watch me colour it if you want to. Um, I know we haven't done the bottles. Um, I think I will just do those in the flag colour. So number two, red nice and sharp because they're very small and I'll show you I'm going to do the top in a solid bit and the neck because it's really small then carefully down each edge lighten it as you come in so just lighten your touch do less layers and leave a tiny white line down the middle I'm not I'm not I'm zoomed out so you probably can't see sorry and then I'm going to stop the video and then put it back on and record me doing the background part. And then I'll come back tomorrow and we'll do some flowers. So uh, I hope that was OK. I know it seemed to take ages. But anyway, um, we'll get a chunk done in between time. So, yes, your homework is to do the uh, to do this little bit of background. It's only that bit. It's not very much. And because this is shrubbery, a round and round movement might be good. But this is grass, so an up and down movement. See how you get on. Okay, well, thank you for watching. As I say, there'll be a speeded bit at the end if you need it. Otherwise, um, have a lovely day and happy colouring. <laughs>